This problem was sent in by a viewer, so thanks Nishan for sending this one through. This comes from the Oxford University Maths Admissions Test from 2003. We have k and n positive integers such that n is at least 2k, and we have n minus 2 factorial over n minus 2k factorial equals k factorial times 2 to the k minus 1. And here it just gives the definition of a factorial. Four parts to this. Suppose k is 1, what are the possible values of n? Suppose now k is 2, show that n minus 2 times n minus 3 is 4, what are the possible values of n? Part 3, suppose k is 3, show that it's impossible for n to be at least 7. And the final part, suppose k is at least 4, show there are no possible values of n. Let's dive right in. Part 1, we want to suppose k is 1, what are the possible values for n? Well, when k is 1, you get n minus 2 factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial, that's definitely going to be 1, equals on the right-hand side, well, k is 1, so 1 factorial times 2 to the 1 minus 1, and that will just be 1. So this is true for all values of n. I guess we do need n to be at least 2k, so any integer n, which is at least 2. Lovely. Okay, part 2. Suppose now that k is 2, show that n minus 2 times n minus 3 is 4. Well, let's just sub it in and see what we get n minus 2 factorial over n minus 4 factorial, that will be equal to 2 factorial times 2 to the 2 minus 1. Okay, well, this right-hand side is nice and easy. 2 factorial is 2, 2 to the 1 is 2, so that's going to be 4. What about the left-hand side? Well, imagine I just write out these terms here. This is n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 times n minus 5 times so on, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. And on the bottom, I've got n minus 4 times n minus 5 times blah, 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 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. That cancels with that. That cancels with that. All of these terms are going to cancel 3 with 3, 2 with 2, 1 with 1. And I've still got this 4 from before on the right-hand side. And now I just get n minus 2 times n minus 3 equals 4 as required. And it asks us what are the possible values of n. Now you could just expand this equation and rearrange and use the quadratic formula, but that's a bit boring. What else could we do here? Well, remember, n is a positive integer, and I notice here n minus 2 and n minus 3 are consecutive uh, integers. They, might, they may not be positive, but they're certainly consecutive integers, and they multiply to give me 4. In particular, if they're consecutive integers, well, then one of them must be odd. I don't know which, but one of them must be odd. But what are the odd factors of 4? The only options are 1 or minus 1. And it doesn't really matter which one's which, but let's say that this one is plus 1 then that means this one, being a consecutive number, is either 2 or 0. And similarly, if that was minus 1, then this one has to be minus 2, or minus 0 is still 0. But notice that no pair of those numbers there is going to multiply to give me 4. The best I can do is do like 1 times 2, or minus 1 times minus 2, and that gives me 2, but that doesn't give me 4. And so therefore, there's no solution to this. Of course, it might be easier to just expand and use the quadratic formula, but this is still a pretty cool way of showing that. Anyway, part three. Um, suppose k is three, show that it's impossible for n to be at least seven. Okay, let's have a go at that. Well, again, just sub it in. Let's see what that, let's see what we get. So we get n minus two factorial over n minus six factorial now equals three factorial, which is six multiplied by two squared, which of course gives us 24. Hmm, 24, that's four factorial. Interesting. Let's have a look at the left-hand side here. Um, again, we can do this kind of expanding and cancelling, and we're going to get n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 times n minus 5 equals 24. Now, why should there be no solutions when n is at least 7? Hmm. What do I get when n equals 7? Well, I get 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. And 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 is definitely bigger than 24. It's 120, which is bigger than 24. Hmm, that's pretty cool. And now I notice that, well, if n is bigger than 7, then, well, this left-hand side is going to be even bigger than 120 because it's just going to be increasing because each of these individual terms for positive n or n at least 5, this is an increasing function. And so if n is 7 doesn't work, nor will 8, nor will 9, nor will 10 because it will completely outweigh 24 on this right-hand side. And so therefore, there are no solutions when n is at least 7. So for the final part, we want to show there's no solutions when k is at least 4. We're going to try and mimic what we did in part 3. n minus 2 factorial over n minus 2k factorial, let's just expand that out, is n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4, all the way down to n minus 2k plus 1, like so. And kind of like we did in part 3 when we subbed in 7, we can sub in the smallest possible value of n here, which is 2k. 
what does this equal when n is 2k? Well, I get 2k minus 2, 2k minus 3, 2k minus 4, and so on, all the way down to 2k minus 2k plus 1, which is 1. And so this is at least 2k minus 2 factorial. And this is in fact true for all values of k, but in particular when k is at least 4. Okay, great. So this thing here is at least the bare minimum of 2k minus 2 factorial. And now all I really need to do is show that this thing here is strictly bigger than k factorial times 2 to the k minus 1 for k at least 4. And this is something we can do relatively easily with induction. So let me do the base case up here where k equals 4. Um, and so the left-hand side is just 6 factorial. Um, so that's the left-hand side. And the right-hand side here is um, 4 factorial times 2 to the 3, which is 8 times 4 factorial, which is definitely oops, less than 30 times 4 factorial, which would be 6 factorial, because 30 is 6 times 5. Okay, that's the base case done. Let's now assume it's true for k equals some number m. So I'll just squeeze this in here. So I'm going to assume that uh, 2m minus 2 factorial is bigger than m factorial times 2 to the m minus 1 for some positive integer m, at least 4. And now what I'm going to do is show that it's true for m plus 1 as well. Well, if I do that, on the left-hand side, I just get 2m factorial. And then what is that? Well, that's 2m times 2m minus 1 times 2m minus 2 factorial. But that there, using my assumption, is bigger than 2m times 2m minus 1 times m factorial times 2 to the m minus 1. Oops. If I use that to and bring it along there, that's the same as m times 2m minus 1 times m factorial times 2 to the m. And now this guy here is clearly going to be bigger than m plus 1. Well, why is that? Well, 2m minus 1, since m is at least 4, 2m minus 1 is at least 7. So this is at least 7m, which is definitely going to be bigger than m plus 1. So this is going to be bigger than m plus 1 um, to, uh, times m factorial times 2 to the m, which is m plus 1 factorial times 2 to the m, which is this right-hand side except m replaced with m plus 1. And that completes our proof by induction. So that shows that this left-hand side is going to be always bigger than this right-hand side. Where am I looking? Over here. So there's no possible way for this to have any solutions for k at least 4, because this side is always strictly bigger than the right-hand side. And that solves this problem. A really interesting one, and I think when I first looked at this, I did struggle with this last part. I wasn't really too sure how to approach this. My first thought was actually to use Bertrand's postulate, which is about the left-hand side and, and thinking about primes that divide into the left-hand side, because I noticed that this guy here doesn't have too many divisors, prime divisors for small values of k. Um, in fact, it can only have primes that are less than or equal to k in its prime factorization. And there may be a way to solve it using that, but this solution, I think, is a little bit nice. It doesn't require any advanced mathematics tools. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.